Hello and welcome to another edition of Shell Black Whiteboard where we help you get the most out of the Salesforce platform. I'm Shell Black, your host, president and founder of shellblack.com and Salesforce MVP. We're still talking about opportunities and we're gonna get into another part of that and that's products and price books. So let's get into it. So first of all, what's a product? Why would we have products? So a product is really a catalog of the things that you sell and what you can sell as a product could be a physical product or it could be a service, so professional services, consulting services, whatever it might be. So why would we even go through this exercise of associating products to an opportunity? Well, it really helps us with reporting because then we can tell through a report what we're selling a lot of, who are we selling to, and for how much. Products is an object just like anything else in Salesforce, like an account, contact, or an opportunity. You have page layouts, you have custom fields. When you turn on products and you start using products to associate products to an opportunity, when you start adding products with pricing, it takes over the amount field on the opportunity. We'll get into this more in a different segment, but as you can see in this example, I've got a $100 product, $50 product, $25 product. As I've added those three products, it will drive the amount field and start updating that out automatically so you don't have to do the math. Okay, more on products. Let's talk about the standard fields for a second. Product name to free form text, however you want to make that description of that product a label, just realize when you're creating this name, make it something that your salespeople can identify the product really quickly so when you're seeing a list of hundreds of products, they can, they can tone in real quick and uh, tune in real quick and see what that is. Product code is an out of the box field. It's really how you wanna use it. You can use it as a SKU number, like a stock keeping unit, or maybe you wanna put the manufacturer's part number in there, whatever you wanna use for product code. Product description, big free form text. So if you have a lot of technical specs about a product, Go to, go to town, it's a really large text field. Product family, this is a pick list. It's really to help you categorize your catalog. So if you think about going to shop on Amazon, you wanna catalog those products. A lot of products you can have, you know, apparel, sporting goods, electronics, music, film, audio, whatever it might be. It's just a pick list to categorize your products to help your salespeople find stuff quicker. The active checkbox, this is an important little field. If it is active, it is visible to your users and they will be able to find that product and associate it to an opportunity. If you want to retire a product, maybe it's no longer made, whatever it might be, and you want to retire it and not make it visible to users to keep selecting an opportunity, you uncheck that box and users will not be able to add it to new opportunities. So those are the standard fields. Let's talk about custom fields. Again, products is a standard tab, standard object. You can do custom fields. You could probably do a lot with this. So I'll give you some that I see a lot. Um, COGS, or cost of goods sold, the cost of the product. So you have a standard price, we'll talk about it in a little bit, which is your sell price, but your cost of goods is a cost of that product. So when you do that, you can actually look at your margin. What was the sell price when we added it to an opportunity versus the cost of goods to get uh, margin dollars and cost of goods sold. Other attributes for a product to help you categorize, it could be things like color, size, weight, does it have a warranty? Maybe you want to have a checkbox to show if it's taxable or not. You could also do a lookup to an account. So if you had a manufacturer field with a lookup to an account, you could then have run reports and say, how much of our product catalog comes from this manufacturer? The last thing I have on the side of the board, and I'm sorry it's kind of low there, is standard price. So when you create a product in, in the database, Salesforce gives you, wants you to give it a standard price. So maybe it's suggested retail price, what do you think this product should sell for? And with that standard price, we're gonna segue over to this side of the board, and we're gonna start talking about this thing called price books. So price books are a way to take your full product catalog, maybe you have 100 or a couple thousand products, and then break that product catalog into subsets with distinct pricing. And the reason why you're doing this is really is to try to make it easier for your salespeople. And let me, let me get this into a real world example, and this will make a lot more sense. So over here on this side of this chart, I've got product A with a standard default list price of $100, product B for 50, product C for 200, product D for 75. We have four price books, 2013 price book, 2014 price book, a government price book, and a reseller price book. Product A, which defaults, it has a standard price of $100, in the 2013 price book, we had it as a, as a sell price of $100. The 24, 2014 price book, the price defaults to $110. That product is not available 
in our government price book. And when we sell it to resellers using this price, price book, it's $90. So if you look at some of these others, product B, 50, 50, government, 45, reseller, 40. This product's not available in the government price book, and these two products are not available to resellers. So maybe these are not for resell products. So what we're doing is we're taking our product catalog that has our default standard price, but when we start an opportunity, we can pick a price book, and for salespeople, they don't have to think about, oh, when I'm selling to the government, I'm only allowed to sell these products. Oh, and when I do sell the government, i got to remember we discount it to this. Or I don't want to remember that when we sell to resellers, only these products are eligible for reseller, and when we do, we've got negotiated pricing for that. So when a salesperson kicks off an opportunity, if you have multiple price books, it forces the, the salesperson down a path where they can only see the products available in that price book and you get to set those prices. Hopefully that starts to make sense why you would have multiple price books. It's just so the salesperson doesn't have to go somewhere else and look at a chart and try to figure out what's my discount, what should I sell this for. So a couple other things. Um, price books is now a tab in Salesforce. It used to be kind of a secondary citizen in the database. They used to squish price books inside the products tab. Just recently, they've promoted that to its own tab. You can have custom fields on your price book. You can also have page layouts, record types, all that good stuff. The standard fields for a price book are very few. There's only a handful out of the box. A name, so the name would be 2013 price book, 2014 price book, government price book. A description if you need to put more information around that. An active checkbox. Check so just how the active checkbox on products made it visible to salespeople, the same thing with price books. So let's look at, like, look up here. We've got our checkboxes going across. This is supposed to be our active checkbox. So notice that I do not have the 2013 price book active. We've retired that. We're now in 2014. I don't want people selling products at these prices anymore. I want people selling on this year's current catalog. So maybe we have a price increase from 2013 to 2014. This one went up $10. This product stayed the same. This product went up $10. When I uncheck this box, people are no longer able to start an opportunity using this set of prices. So when you kick off an opportunity and you have multiple uh, price books that are active, they'll get a pick list that says when you add a product, it'll stop them and say, okay, what price book do you want to use for this opportunity? You can only use one price book per opportunity. So if I'm an, a salesperson and I'm starting an opportunity, I can't cherry pick one product out of the government price book, pick another product out of the reseller price book, pick another product out of the 2014 price book, you have to only have single products from a single price book on an opportunity. So that wraps up our segment on products and price books. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a couple things today. If you want to give some feedback on how we're doing, you can reach out to us a couple different ways. You can hit me on Twitter, shell underscore black, or you can email me, whiteboard at shellblack.com. We'd love your comments. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll hope to see you soon.